said now. We just want to make sure. Okay. Um, I want to thank uh, everybody for, for being here today. Uh, I'm Mike Farnworth, the uh, Solicitor General for British Columbia and the Minister responsible for Emergency Management British Columbia. I'm here in Grand Forks where today I've uh, been with the, uh, the Mayor, Frank Conrad, the uh, Regional District uh, Chair, uh, Russell, and have had an opportunity to see firsthand the devastation in this community and the region surrounding it. And it really is, it leaves you speechless in what you see. The damage, the devastation, the destruction. Um, I've never seen anything quite like it. And it's going to take a long time to get things back to normal and to get things up and running. But I've also seen some and met some amazing people. I want to pay tribute to the, uh, the first responders, the search and rescue people, the firefighters, the police, the paramedics, the Red Cross. The hundreds of volunteers that have helped build sandbags, that have brought food to people, that have uh, housed people, that have made sure that, that the residents of this community and the region have got what they need. Because I can't imagine going through what a lot of them have been through. I've spoken to people today who they've lost their homes, they've lost their businesses, they've lost things that, you know, they'll never get back. And when you see that, we need to send a very clear message that this community, this region has come together. They've got the leadership of the mayor, they've got the leadership of the regional district, and the province stands with them. This is not over yet. We've had one crest come through. There's another crest expected to come through later this week. The water, the water forecasters are trying to model just what it's going to look like. We hope that it's not as bad as what it was before. But like with anything, you plan for the worst and you hope for the best. But after that, what's important, and the message that I want to give today, is that the province stands with the people of this community and this district because we know the recovery is going to be a long process. We know that there's a lot of work that's got to be done. I can tell you that uh, the Premier, Premier John Horgan, has spoken both with uh, Mayor Conrad and with uh, District uh, Chair Russell and assured him that the province's long-term commi commitment to rebuilding and recovery in this region. Premier Horgan has also spoken this morning with uh, the Prime Minister and made him aware of the situation here and how it's going to be uh, a significant recovery is required. So I want to pay tribute to everyone who's been involved in the evacuation and making sure that emergency services are delivered. But most of all, I want to assure people that we are here for the long term. And now I can take some questions if you've got them. Minister, what does that look like as far as support? You mentioned you can be support here short and long term, but mm -hmm. that's a lot of money, but not just money. That's a lot of different things. It What's is a lot mean? of different things. And the key, key element of that is getting a full understanding of the damage and the devastation that's occurred. Because it's infrastructure, such as dikes, for example. Uh, flying over here today, as the water has receded before the next crest, one of the things that's become clear is that you've seen changes in the, uh, in the river channel. And those changes, in many cases, will be permanent. So you've seen homes that are stranded. Uh, you've seen areas that were once, you know, dikes were thought to be sufficient are not. So there's that kind of infrastructure that's got to be done. Uh, you're going to have to look at the long-term consequences in terms of the downtown and the economic development uh, that, that fuels the local economy in this area. All of those things are going to need a long-term plan in place. There is provincial uh, disaster fine, you know, funding that, that, is, that we are able to draw on. At the same time, there's also federal funds that apply in very different programs. And what we want to make sure that we're doing is working with the, uh, the city, working with the regional district to identify what are those key challenges, short term, medium term and long term that have to be addressed. Minister, a two part question for you. Uh, what's the situation like today and how many people are still under evacuation alerts or orders? Um, my understanding is that there are still, I think, uh, there are 900 people under evacuation order. I'm not sure what the number is on alert, but here's the expert who can tell me. So we had, at the height of this, we had 1,600 people under order, which is about 3,000 people. And today we've drawn that back. We've drawn about 150 back. 
I haven't been in the operation centre for most of the day, so we may have drawn more over the day today. But right now, we're preparing to, to, to make that footprint smaller, but we're not prepared to do that until we actually know the footprint of the crest that's expected Wednesday through Friday. So people who are out under order are going to be out under order for the next few days. Minister, we talked about uh, the Premier talking to the Prime Minister. That's great news. When do you make that call? When you say, hey, we need this funding, we need it now? Because that's going to have to happen pretty quick. Those discussions, or the, now that, that that conversation has already started, I will be uh, in, in touch with my counterpart at the federal level, Minister Goodale. The key in this particular in this particular region right now is this situation, is what happens later this week. Um, because if it's lower and we don't get additional damage, that's one thing. But if, you know, the worst comes and it were to be higher, that may make things even more challenging. So the water's got to recede, but one thing's pretty clear. Uh, there's going to be a long, there needs to be a long-term commitment to this community and this region. And as a province, we're saying we're going to be there and standing with the people of this community to make sure that commitment follows through. We've looked at a lot of these properties. I mean, everyone has, you've had, you've gone, yep. you've seen to the province, yep. you've seen that devastation yep. firsthand. But a lot of those people might not have insurance. So are they protected as well? And how are they protected? Those are all the things that we now need to, once we've got a, a good understanding of what the devastation is, the total amount of devastation, where it is, uh, working with the uh, the community and the regional district to see, okay, what's the most effective way to deal with some of the issues, whether it's, uh, as I said, key infrastructure that needs to be done. Some places it may well be rebuilding. Others, unfortunately, may not be able to rebuild. But there's a whole series of things that are going to need to be dealt with, and a key part of that is knowing exactly what the full extent is, and that's why these this next week is so critical. Um, you know, at the Emergency uh, Operations Centre today, seeing that graph of what has just happened uh, with this hot weather, what they're predicting, uh, and the different rivers that are, and, and how that plays out, is all going to have a significant impact. I know the mayor asked for your help. I think that you guys jumped to that. So this is a, a tough place to live right now because it's on the it's on the map. That's what we're looking at. Yep. We're going right into fire season. Absolutely. And that's, uh, that's another natural disaster. A lot of attention will be put on that as well. How can you reassure people here and in all these small communities in BC that that funding will continue once those other big fires and other natural disasters flare off? That's why I'm here. Uh, that's why the, uh, the, the Premier uh, phoned the uh, talk with the Mayor. That's why he's talked with the Regional District Director. That's why he's talked with the Prime Minister to make it clear. This is not some sort of flash in the pan, oh, it can be cleaned up in a couple of days. This is going to take a long-term commitment, and we are here, and we are going to be here for the long term. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Yeah. can you just... Here from the crowd, that's fantastic. Can uh, put some money on, on the table? On, on a personal level, you saw that devastation. You saw that damage. You saw some of those homes where people are still inside and had to be rescued. Three more rescues today. What stuck out to you the most of it? I just can't imagine. Like when you see your house and it's surrounded by water and you're still in there and you don't you don't want to leave because it's your home. You know, it's your home. It's where you're supposed to feel safe. And you can't get out. And you may not have left because, you know, you've got people like their pets and their animals. I, 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 I just can't imagine. I cannot imagine what it must be like. Can you describe some of what you saw today as you visited this community? You saw... You saw homes that have clearly stood for, you know, I saw the one house and I looked at it and it looks like it was built 80, 90 years ago. And it stood the test of time for 80, 90 years until the last few days where you can see that the water has undermined the foundation. You see homes down in, 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 in Ruffle, north and south, that the water's right up to the windows and you go, people have lived there for, for how many years? Um, I spoke to residents, someone who said they've been here 29 years. Some of the firefighters here have lived there all their lives. They've never seen anything like it. You know, people have said not since the, 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 the flood of 1948. Like, you, when you think about that, you realize, and what happened last year, and again, you go, and you ask, is this the new normal? Is this what we have to deal with? Um, it's, it's pretty devastating. What have you been told as far as the forecast going forward into the next week? Um, I don't like what I'm hearing, that it's hot weather. And coming over here from Nelson, there's a lot of snow still up there. And it's melting, and with these temperatures, it melts very quickly. 
And um, what I hope is, is that once this is over, that we have a very wet June, um, and that uh, the forest fire season is not what it was last year, and that uh, you know people are able we're able to get on with the cleanup, and people in the, and the communities are able to rebuild and get on with their lives. Have you been given any numbers as far as homes damaged or destroyed? Not yet, and it's too early at, at, at this point. Um, it's going to be, you know, given what the forecasters have been saying about um, the temperature, the snowpack, how fast things melt, and what this, this next week looks like, we're going to have to get through that before we can have a full assessment of exactly uh, what, what, what the total damage is. So the homeowners that are here who have been wiped out or had to be diligent elsewhere, like the, my daughter-in-law who's with us, um, that's good for them. But for small businesses, like my partner has a business in, yep. right on market in a century-old building, and yep. she's facing thousands of dollars of damage. Is the DFA going to be available for those small businesses too? We've had DFA available for fire uh, for the fires last year. I'm going to be going back and looking at all the programs that we have in place. I'm going to be talking with the Premier saying, look, we've got to make sure that we're able to help the people in Grand Forks and the, the regional district around it, uh, because this is, this is, I've never seen anything like it. Thank you. What, what will the process be to small businesses to apply for help? I think that's something that uh, I can get the, uh, the emergency management um, uh, people to give you exactly how the process works, and if you give me a contact information, I'll make sure that they are they are in in, in full contact with you. Okay. Thanks okay. for all your support. And again, I'd like to assure all the citizens that this is a real, real devastating time for everyone in the community. I realize that, but we've just begun. The aftermath is the concern, as the Minister had stated and as I spoke to Premier John Morgan on Friday and yesterday. It's the aftermath that we have to contend with, and we're not even done yet with the first wave. So hopefully this second wave, and we can only keep our fingers crossed that the experts are wrong, but having said that, it's the aftermath, the cleanup. And again, I plead with all the citizens that are still in their houses, that are resisting evacuation, please comply for your own safety and for the safety of the first responders and the help that's trying to help you. Please comply and leave your homes. There's no benefit for you risking your life. Material property can be replaced, human lives cannot. And I'd like to thank all the volunteers. We, we, are, we are just raveling all over the province with the amount of input we have from our volunteers and our young people are out there impressive and I mentioned that to our premier to our premier this uh, Friday the same statement everybody's pulling together here which is a very very good scenario and I must say I'm proud to be a resident of Grand Forks you're all doing a marvelous job keep it up and let's just hold it together we can do it together we can do it thank you